Alright, so I got this length of cable here, and this I planned to be the uh, from the battery to the circuit breakers cable. But I'm not sure if it's long enough, so I gotta run it and uh, check it. But uh, it's important that this doesn't touch the uh, positive terminal of the battery. So to ensure that, I guess I'll stick it in a latex glove here and then I'll place it close to the positive terminal of the battery where it's intended to run from, but not exactly right on it. Now fortunately on my vehicle, uh, if you can get in here, there are these rubber thingies that uh, travel to the inside of the compartment there. And uh, I can just string it through there. It's called a firewall. Oh, but I have to run it, run the cable um, as I would if I were hooking it up so that I get the right length. Don't want too long of a length. It's not good for the economy. Alright, so here's the cable coming through. I'm going to want to have it travel this direction. And I'm going to want to tie it onto something around here. Not sure yet what. I guess I could tie it to the back of this support beam here. Should be alright. And then I want it to come up. And I want it to split off around here. I'll tie it to one of these cable runs, if you can see these cable runs here. And, uh, so that means I'll make my split offs about that long, and I should have ample room to work with. Alright, so this is the long cable that's going to the battery. And it's going to split off, because I have two inverters, it's going to split off into two circuit breakers. And, uh, I'm putting the first wire on, like, here. And I'll twist that together later. And then I'll put the other solid copper wire in the midst of that, and I'm going to solder it up. Basically, I'm going to feed a whole bunch of solder into this joint and from different angles just so uh, everything's rock solid, full metal. Don't have to worry too much Load out. Oh. about it coming apart. It's going to be hot to the touch. Not too bad. Burning solder ain't too dangerous to breathe, although it ain't perfect. But burning plastic um, I can't say. I'm gonna let it cool and put some electrical tape over that. Wrap it real good. Yeah, for sure. All right. Um, so we've covered the joint in three pretty generous runs of electrical tape, but uh, electrical tape tends to come off. I don't trust it. That's why people use shrink wrap. But that's a pain in the ass, and it costs money. Expensive, kind of. So uh, I'm going to zip tie the uh, electrical tape. All right, so this is the cable that goes from the battery. It's going to go within the battery terminal. Don't need to put a terminal on it. To the uh, circuit breakers. And I just accomplished a very beautiful solder right here. Um, I am no soldering expert. But uh, just so happened that uh, I got a ball of solder here. It wasn't melting in, and I thought, hey, if I just get it hotter, Maybe it'll melt in and go within the wires and get in this connector and make it more solid. And uh, so I kept the flame on it and the solder just melted right in there and it's nice and solid. So I'm stoked. Big main cable, ready. Just taking off the jacket here so that I can access the metal. So I can drill out the metal and make a connector that'll go on to the inverter. It won't be a very good connector as is, so uh, got to make a hole somewhere. And since I want uh, another connector to kind of quick release go in here, the way it's designed to do, then I'm going to want to use this, and I can if I bend this out and make it flat. So, we're going to get in there. 
some drill bits aren't suitable for metal, but these are. Now, when you get toward the bottom of the hole you're going to dig in the piece of metal here, it's going to want to grab. Yeah. So, uh... You need a clamp. I have use a vice a, grips. Either use a clamp or just deal with the consequences. I should get you a vice grip so you don't cut your thumb. I have a little clamp. But you're in a hurry. Never do stuff in a hurry. Listen, kids. Don't do this at home. <laughs> Still not big enough? That's what she said. But you have control over that, too. <laughs> That's my next project. Come on, come on. Pretty solid connection, but I'm gonna have to cut this sleeving off to make it fit again. As you can see, this wire is a single solid piece copper. It has better electrical transfer, but it's not very good for crimping wires onto, so I'm gonna have to solder this down with some solder. All right, I've never used this thing before. This is a weird soldering iron. So we'll see how it goes, but basically I'm gonna heat up the part and then I'm gonna melt this and have it drip on and have it dry. Both parts need to be hot. Um, don't remember all the details, but if you really wanna learn how to solder, you can uh, check out a bunch of tutorials on YouTube or something like that. And there's also a basic overview in my uh, written guide. I don't like this. I like my old fashioned one. Yeah. It gets a little I burn my hand every time. This is technology, baby. Get used to it. As you can see, these things are a pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. Here comes a blowtorch. Wow, that's pretty neat. I uh, probably didn't make very solid. That's work. You got it. You covered that fucker in solder. All right, that's true. All right. All of those uh, lettered or numbered items are referenced in the tutorial, but the ones I'm going to tell you about are two, three, and A. Two and three are quick disconnect terminals called QD sometimes. There's various ways of referring to them. And A is a crimpable ring terminal. The type A usually carries more current than type 2 and 3. And uh, actually if you look down at the B version down there, um, those are typically very large and you can insert huge wires into those very often. So um, those are some popular crimpable terminals to use. Please take note that pliers won't always do the job to crimp down a connector, so you might go get a sledgehammer. I'm going to recommend, though, soldering them anyway, just because it's safe. So, 2 and 3, quick disconnect, they both fit inside of each other, and A and B are types of ring terminals.